What's going on guys? So today we have a very interesting video and this is one that you guys may not have expected simply because last time we did a video like this on something like this we went in a direction that would probably make a little more sense than what we're doing today. But today we want to try to save you a little bit of money and we're going to do things a little different. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so you all know when I do my RV reviews and I work my way around to the back of the RV, I will usually point out if an RV is prepped for a Furion wireless backup camera. Why do I specifically say that? Well, there's an interesting reason for that. Because like our surveyor, most RVs are prepped for a wireless Furion backup camera. In some cases, they come equipped with a backup camera, but very, very few RVs do. I almost feel as if Furion gives these to RV manufacturers in the hope that if it's the Furion branded you know, prep, people will go specifically with that camera. But I want to give people an alternative because the Furion system, it's a good system. It actually works really well. It's one of the only systems that I've put on RVs that don't require an amplifier or a booster. And that's a big deal because if you don't have to run wires across the top of your RV, that's a really, really big deal. But the back of our Forest River Surveyor, the 2024 collaboration unit, does have a prep for a Furion wireless backup camera. But we're going to do things a little different today. We're going to go with a different product that is meant to kind of replace this in a clean way. Before I show you what that is, I want to show you what this is. So this is the Lippert on-the-go telescoping ladder system for the back of RVs that are prepped for a Lippert on-the-go telescoping ladder system. A lot of folks haven't seen this. A lot of folks don't specifically know what type of ladder they need to connect to that if they have an RV that is not equipped with a ladder on the back of it like our Brookstone is. So the Brookstone has the ladder on the back. A lot of newer RVs are not coming equipped with that. Some are, many are still, but a lot of them aren't. And if you don't have the ladder on the back and you wanna use the system that works specifically with this, this is what it is, unless you can kind of make one yourself because I don't think it would be too difficult to make a system that works with that yourself. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So on the other side, you simply have this bracket that hooks around that on-the-go system. So you may be able to save some money, get a ladder that does not have this bracket, and maybe fabricate one yourself if you have that capability. Not everyone will, of course. But of course, those hooks right there will specifically go into those grooves up there, giving you the ability to use this ladder on the back of your RV. Now, some people may say, I don't need that. Instead, they'll just get a telescoping ladder, a basic one, and they'll simply lean it up against the top edge, maybe with like a foam noodle or something up there to protect their RV. But if you do want the one that specifically works with that, this is the one that does it. Again, I think a lot of people might fabricate their own version of it because, you know, the folks over at eTrailer who provided this to me for review and evaluation, they basically said, you know, we carry tons of telescoping ladders that don't have this bracket on the back, and it doesn't seem too difficult to put a bracket on the back of your ladder if you want to modify it, or simply just use the telescoping ladder with like a pool noodle or a piece of foam or a piece of cloth. Some people will probably just fold up a towel just to protect that trim right there. But just wanted to show you what the system actually looks like. We're going to use this ladder, hopefully, to accomplish what we're trying to do today. Now, the problem is, as you can see, that the camera is about a foot and a half over from the very left edge of this on-the-go system. So I do have to make sure that I have the reach to be able to safely work on this. If I don't, I'll just probably just extend this, move it over, and just put a towel or something at the top there to protect it, just like I'm talking about. But we'll see. Okay, so I want to show you how this works. I have to honestly tell you, this is probably one of the smoothest deploying telescoping ladders I've used before. It absolutely works really well. It is buttery smooth, and um, I can definitely appreciate that. But I already have it extended. You can see the hooks up there, and they're simply going to go into the grooves right there. Let's see if I can get that in place. And I can extend it probably a little bit more to get a better angle if I want. So there you go. As far as stability, how this feels, well, it definitely feels stable. I'm not worried at all about it's sliding out of place because this is supporting it on the other side and it keeps it from sliding. That's actually pretty substantial too. It doesn't feel like it's a cheap, flimsy piece of plastic. It's pretty thick. So there's no lip here. You see the edge? That's as thick as the plastic is all around this. So I like that. I probably do have the ability 
to get this unscrewed because I can reach it pretty easily all the way around. We'll have to cut that silicone up there around the seal. Hopefully the one that I replace it with will just fit in that seal. That would be kind of cool. The way that they wire this, they simply wire it off of the power going to your rear clearance light. So whenever you turn on your parking lights, these lights come on, it powers up your camera. So if you want to use any of these cameras, again, the wiring comes off of this back light and that's how it powers the camera on. Okay, so this is the Voyager Digital Wireless Observation System featuring Wysight 2.0 technology. And this is designed for RVs that are pre-wired for Voyager. However, it says this system can be installed on any vehicle pre-wired or not. So we're going to open this up and we're going to see what's included in the box. So you have the camera system right here. This is going to be your back camera and this is going to be your 7-inch display. Now, I'm already anticipating running into one issue, and that issue isn't related to this so much. It's related to the fact that we typically tow this RV with the GMC Denali. And what is the GMC Denali missing are all new GM trucks from 2021 or 2022 and up that might make this difficult to use. While I unbox this, I'll let you guess. A lot of people say you don't need it anymore. But... This is how you plug the system in to power. This right here is typically called a 12 volt outlet or a 12 volt adapter or a cigarette lighter style adapter. There are no 12 volt cigarette lighter plugs in the GMC truck at all. On this truck or any three quarter ton or one ton trucks, I think built after like 2022. So, this may not work for us, and I might have to actually get an adapter to convert from 12 volt to 110 so I can plug it into the vehicle's 110 outlet. So you have the power cable, we have our suction mount, and I typically, believe it or not, prefer the 5 inch display over the 7 inch display, mainly because the 7 inch display on the vehicle's dash or on the window takes up a lot of room. It blocks a lot of room, and I like to have as much outside visibility as possible uh, unobstructed by screens and things like that. Okay, it would be really great, and it's something I might try to figure out if I can integrate the camera to work with the vehicle's navigation system. That would work really nice, so I can use the factory screen to project what the camera's showing off the back of the trailer. Hopefully. So this is not a small screen. We can see that this is a seven inch display, but the overall dimensions, not including the antenna, are a hair over eight inches, about eight and one eighth inches by four and three quarter inches. And the thickness is about an inch. So it takes up a relatively good sized space and it's gonna take up a pretty big chunk of space on your windshield. So that's one of the areas where I don't really care for large screens like this. I'd prefer something a little bit smaller. Some of you may prefer the larger screen because you may only use it at certain times, maybe when you're backing up the trailer or you're trying to maneuver it. But if you wanna keep it on and have it kind of as a rear view camera for whenever you're driving, again, this can take up a good amount of space on your dash. Very nice. At least the screen here isn't high gloss. It's more of a matted finish, which means it's going to help eliminate some glare if you have the sun hitting it from an angle, especially if you're driving more towards the morning or the evening where the sun can be coming through the side windows. And then the mounting bracket is right here. Actually, there may be a little more in here. Oh, that is everything from the box. Let's get this out of the way. And then this mounts inside of here, like this. Snaps on the back. Then unsnaps right there. But you essentially need that on here if you're going to mount it to your windshield or really anywhere else. And this should go into there. They have a really cool kind of textured system on the back here to keep it from rotating around if you go over bumps. I like that. That's probably going to be how we're going to want to use it. Yeah, that's not going to move around at all. All right. 
Set that aside. Let's take a look at our camera. This is our wiring harness, screws, which will probably have the mounting plate already on it. It does. Very nice. Has a little shield up here to, I guess, protect this housing from UV light. You have three set screws here on the side, three more on this side, so you can adjust the position of the camera. You can actually move it by hand. It's just real stiff, which is good. You don't want it moving around. Antenna is already mounted. And then on the back is where you would plug it in. And hopefully, when we remove the Furion camera, all of this will just kind of seamlessly go into place and we can cover up the holes that are currently there. But you can see this is going to plug in like that and they put a nice gasket around everything. That's what it looks like. And then of course these will just wire into the camera on the back of the trailer, or at least the wiring on the back of the trailer. You always want to double check that the wiring is wired correctly because sometimes it's not. We experienced that with an RV that we did a review on a while back. Anyways. Let's get up there and disconnect the Furion plate. Okay, let's see if we can get this disconnected up here. Okay, and this right here is your plug. If you have the Furion camera, it just simply plugs in right here, and the Furion camera system replaces this entire assembly or just the center part right here, depending on what you get. This whole plate should come off now. I'm sorry, rubber gasket should come off now. And then you can probably pull a fair amount of it out. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cut off the Furion system. I'm gonna cut it back a little bit this way, so if I ever wanna repurpose this or give this to someone else, I can do that. I'm gonna split the wires right here. And then I'm just going to cut off the ends. Okay. We're going to see if we can scrape some of this off. Actually, I was going to go get a scraper, but looks like I can just do it with my finger now. Okay, we got it all cleaned up. I go and get my wires spliced. Now, I would typically heat shrink this, but I really don't need to because everything's gonna be in the back. So I'm not too worried about these wires needing to be completely sealed. All right, we're gonna put that one right there. And this one right here. Okay. Here you go. It has a little arrow pointing at the top to indicate what direction it goes. We're going to grab two screws real quick and put that in place. So there's the one thing I don't really care for about this system is the fact that it is not a direct replacement for the Furion camera. I almost feel if it's just about making, you know, little incremental changes to the housing here to make them align up with the screws, they should all kind of be universal. But let's go ahead and get this one put on. And I'm just basing my measurements on the spacing from the top screw holes right here to the bottom of the plate here.
Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna grab some silicone to fill in those two holes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and fill these holes up. And the other holes are not exposed, except back there, just a hair. But I know the other one's covered completely. And this camera is not gonna work well for me where it's at, so I'm gonna have to tilt it down slightly. I'm gonna have to loosen these so I can tilt it down a little bit. And to do that, just use the included Allen head key to loosen them slightly. That was enough on this one side and tilt it down. I'm gonna leave these loose until I can check to make sure that everything looks good. I probably loosened them a little bit more than I needed to. Okay. Now, unfortunately, until I get a 12 volt cigarette lighter style adapter that works with a 110 outlet on the GMC Denali pickup truck, I'm gonna have to use the F450 to test how the camera works. So I have the screen right here with me. We're gonna hop inside of the truck, turn on the parking lights, which should power up the camera, plug the screen in and see what happens. Okay, so I obviously have the screen mounted exactly where you shouldn't mount it, and that is directly in front of you, but I could move it to a couple different areas, probably way up here, or I don't really know, maybe right in this area right here. But let's go ahead and plug it into the 12 volt outlet, one of three that I have just on the inside of this truck. Right there, we don't even have to turn power on completely, so I'm gonna turn on my parking lights. And then I need to hold the pair button down for five seconds, then apply power to the camera. Okay, so we got it working. Um, at first, it wouldn't find it, so I had to go back and I realized that the plug that screws in first on the back of the RV was too tight, and I had compressed the gasket so much so that when the camera went over it, it didn't fully seat the connector. So I went back there trying to figure out what was going on, uh, found out that that was the problem. I loosened it a bit, let the foam kind of decompress, and then I put it on, and then I came back to the truck, did the same pairing function that I did last time, and it found the camera in like three seconds. So I really don't need to adjust it down at all. This is a pretty dang wide view. And if you saw where the ladder was and where the bumper is, you can see there's, there's a great deal of visibility back here. I can definitely see a pretty good distance back behind the RV, which is really nice. Um, that's gonna be really good. Let's go ahead and wrap up the install and then we'll talk about this. Okay, so I have the ladder stowed again. There it is. That is really, really good. I love the placement of it. It sticks off about the same amount. Actually, it sticks off a little bit further than the Furion camera does up here, but it's not much. The materials seem to be pretty dang solid, pretty good quality product, and the view is really nice. I'm actually really happy with what I can see, and what you could see in the video is that you can see the bumper, the ladder feet, which were right here, and you could even see part of the Brookstone, which is about 12 feet away. So that's a super cool and relatively easy install for I think most people. This is definitely one of those things you can knock out in probably about 30 minutes. Uh, the pairing process was simple once I re realized what was going on. So whenever you screw the little part with the little round plug on it on first, just don't tighten it too much. Just screw it enough to be snug, but not super tight. The gasket on the actual camera itself, the body goes around the entire assembly. So you don't have to worry about water getting in through there. What's also nice about this system is that it's about $100 less than the equivalent Furion system with the seven inch display. So you're gonna save quite a bit of money. It's a little over $400 for this system. Um, it it reaches the truck no problem and if you saw I have the 450 hooked up to the surveyor right now so it's a good distance away right and Voyager claims that you have an uninterrupted signal quality from up to 60 feet away so yeah, if you have an extremely long setup, you might run into some issues. But if you use this system, if you have this system currently, I'd love to know what your feedback is. But what do you guys think? I'd love to know. Guys, leave a comment below. Um, tell me what camera system you have and if you like it. I know I've done reviews on like Halo View as well as the Furion system and now this system. Uh, right now, I can tell you that 
Uh, they're all about the same. The only difference here is that the halo view systems typically required an amplifier. They typically required something to reach the vehicle itself. Furion system works pretty well. Um, some parts of the Furion system seem a little flimsy, um, and I'm going to be interested to see how this one works. But you can see I have full signal strength right now, which is really nice, which means that I can definitely have a much larger trailer or longer trailer and connect to it. Anyways, guys, I would love your feedback. Uh, please leave a comment below. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.